on base six times. He scored four runs, and that really, I think, provided a lot of the leadership. They scored one run in the first, three in the third, three in the fourth, and that was the four innings that Brett Hewitt went. Tonight's starting pitcher Tom Tice now out of the two-hole. Only four hits for Newberg in that game earlier this afternoon. 1-0 here to Tice, and then hard-hitting B.J. Huff on deck. That loss again suffered by Newberg just the second of the season. They had won 28 straight after dropping the first game of the 1993 summer season. Like I said during the pregame, it just seemed like they ran out of gas and they ran out of gas early and then just going through the motions realizing they could be here. I think that probably about the fifth inning and at that point you look at what Pate had done to that point. They had already had a six or seven run lead and it looked like Newberg was having trouble getting focused out there. We mentioned the defensive miscues. They had six errors committed in the ball game. It really started off the first inning. Adrian Hoskins led off with a single to the right field. Hewitt tried to pick him off at first base. The throw was wild. That enabled Adrian to move all the way over to third. There goes Engelbrecht. He's a speedster also. Engelbrecht tries to get there in time. So right from the top, here comes Newberg with some redemption of their own. And I think they're going to use that first game kind of as an inciting factor to really get them pumped up. Pate got off to a very early lead, and I think they maintained their tradition of really pounding a lot of base hits. There was not a lot of extra base hits. Most of the 20 base hits were singles, but they came with key personnel and bases and really got the good job producing the runs. One ball, two strikes. Should mention that first game was a seven-inning affair. Ten run rule. And that's 16-2 after seven. That was it. One-two pitch. Hines tries to get him on the outside. He does. One down here, the top half of the first inning. Brings up second baseman B.J. Huff. Look at the numbers on B.J. the after afternoon game. Was 0 for 4. Hit the ball twice. Pretty good. Both times of the shortstop, Drew Bailey. So Engelbrecht out by a couple down at second. Just underway here on a Sunday night. Championship game of Legion Baseball for the sectionals. Rockport awaits the winner, and then two weeks from today, they'll be playing the state championship in Terre Haute. Umpires in our championship game today. Terry Peckinpah working behind the plate. Terry West at first base. Tim Bourne working down at third. 1-0 here to B.J. Huff. He raced for it. Charging is Adrian Hoskins. Three back. And right inside the three. Bailey was there, Hoskins was there, Buckting was there. And that's one of those base hits that if you threw it out there, you couldn't place it any better because it was so in between all three players. It appeared that maybe Adrian was taking charge coming in. He had the best opportunity, but couldn't get there because he was playing pretty deep with B.J. at the plate. And now you've got runners at first and third for Newburgh. Cleanup hitter Justin Sebeska to the plate. Very quickly, first and third for Newburgh Camperman, the defending state champions of American Legion Baseball. They were ousted last year by Arlington Heights, Illinois. Drop ball by McCutcheon. Runners hold. And you've got some speed out there in Engelbrecht at third and Huff down at first. And quickly out is Mike Gady. This is for all the marbles, so you're not going to waste a lot of time. And I'm sure right now this is pretty much a conversation and volume mechanics and situations. Mike pointing in toward the plate, wondering probably what that pitch was going to be called right there as far as breaking ball or a fastball. A good job by Chris behind the plate just to knock it down. More or less, I think, education right here as far as Mike telling Adam how to approach these different hitters. Very good job by John Ambrose in the first game this afternoon. Darren mentioned he only gave up four base hits, two runs. One of those runs responsible from Justin right here. He led off the fourth inning with a solo home run. So a tough four or five here for Newberry. And the first is to Sebeska. through in that first game, picking up the win in that shortened seven. Legion Baseball going nine innings in the sectionals, all games nine innings. And this is a 15-run rule after five or ten after seven, which you ran into earlier. 
One two pitch by Hines. And a base hit by Sebesco. New Bird Kapperman has their first lead in what is turning out to be a long afternoon. Good piece of hitting right there by Jessen, and that's something he's done all season long, not only for Newberg Kaepernick, but was doing that for Andy Rice and Harrison during the high school season. A one-two pitch up a little bit in the strike zone on the outer part of the plate, and a good hitter just takes it to the right side just like that. Tom Held, the right fielder, with two on and one away here in the top half of the first inning. Championship game of American Legion Baseball's sectional. Solid hit again. This should be enough to score B.J. Huff. In comes Huff. We've got a 2 nothing ball game. All of a sudden, the momentum has shifted. Well, we kind of figured coming in that Eugene Pate was going to have an advantage because they did such a good job in that first game, scoring 16 runs, 20 base hits. But you kind of figured halfway through, as we mentioned, that Newberg not really gave up, but they kind of lost that zip that they usually have out there. And you can see that I think the grouping together, the meeting after that first game, Joe told everybody, okay, that's our second loss of the season. We've got to come back and play if we're going to defend our state championship. We're going to have to do it immediately in the first inning, and that's exactly what they're doing. Quick work of the bullpen for Eugene Pate. Hines has some help as he had all summer long. His North teammate, Kenny Bowles. Ambrose still has five innings left. And this again is Mike Gady out to the hill. Second trip to the mound, that is going to be it for Adam Hines. So you can see that Mike is not going to waste a whole lot of time. He can't really afford to. Hines has had a tough sectional weekend here. Let's see if they can pick it up. We take this timeout, 2-0, top half of the first inning, the championship game of American Legion Baseball's sectional on TV 52. Looking for great food, good times, and free entertainment? You'll find it at the 1993 Evansville River Fest, August 4th through 7th on the Main Street Walkway and Riverside Drive. Delicious catfish fiddler dinners and other festival foods. Rides and games for kids, the Office Olympics, live bands featuring the Brown Sisters, Patoka Valley Boys, and others. There's a free kids' fair, classic car show, and fun for everyone. For more information, call 424-2986. Evansville River Fest, August 4th through 7th, downtown Evansville. Where does he get his information about drugs, alcohol, and sex? One day he's a child, and the next he's making decisions that could risk his life. It's a helpless feeling for a parent because you can't always be with him to keep him safe. But you can teach him how to be safe, and those words will stay with him, even when you can't. We can help you talk about AIDS. Call for a guide. <laughs> Well, quick replacement, Kyle Wagner in for Adam Hines. Back on a bossy field, I'm Duran Smith with Doug Emick. In the top half of the first inning, 2-0 in favor of Newberg Kapperman. Two runs on four base hits already. One out runners now at first and third. Kyle's numbers coming into the weekend, 4-0 at 2.12 ERA. 26 in the third innings of work has given up 23 base hits, 10 runs, eight of those earned. We saw him Friday night in pretty good control most of the season for him. 27 strikeouts, only five walks. Well, you'll see much more of Kyle Wagner next year as he should be uh, close to the ace of the staff next year from Memorial High School in Quentin Merkel. He and, of course, Dan Ming, who we've seen also throw a little bit this summer. It's very interesting to see Mike out of the gates that early to get Adam. It's early in the indications, I think, that he's not going to waste a lot of time if he runs into problems. He knows that he's got four or five guys in the bullpen that he can go to. You look at Charlie Brown, who pitched yesterday. Kenny Bowles pitched yesterday. You've also got Matt Jakes, Dan Ming. We've seen Adam McCutcheon a couple times this year. And if they need to, Adrian Hoskins out in center field can give him an inning or two. Jim Lynch, the left fielder for Newberg Kaepernick. They're up 2-0, two, 2 on here. And threatening for some more as the rain begins to fall at Boston Field. And a rain delay in the first game. Actually, more of a lightning delay first game out here this afternoon. It rains a little bit more here in the nightcap. One ball, one strike. The noisiest of all Legion crowds has to be Newburgh Cap. You can tell they're here. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. 1-2. One, Got our 
first look at Kyle Wagner a couple of years ago in the Reserve City Championship. And right there you can see he's got a pretty good off-speed pitch, and that really sets up, I think, his fastball. If he can get ahead of the count, a good off-speed pitch there, look for him to maybe get a fastball and bring it in on the inside part of the plate. That's just down low. Nice save by McCutcheon with the runners threatening to move at first and third. Two balls, two strikes to Jim Lynch, Toby Wolf on deck. Sixth batter faced here by Legion pitching of Evansville. Face hit in front of Charlie Brown. We have got a 3 0 game. And this is something that Newberg was not really ever capable of doing in the first game today. Only four base hits. They went the first three without a base hit. They had runners on each of the first four innings, but really couldn't get anything going until Justin let off the fourth with a home run. They already have more hits now than they had in that entire first game. 20 hits for Evansville earlier. First and second for Camperman. Striking early and often. Swing and a miss by Wolf. Nothing in two. Just one out on the board. We've talked about in our Legion coverage the depth of this Pate offensive nine. You talk about similar situations when you look at Newberg's club. Toby Wolf, very good man to have at the plate when you need a run, especially with runners in scoring position. Stepping out here, Toby. Scott Hurt, Sean Bennett, round out the nine for Newberg. Wagner trying to get his first. Second looking, first by Wagner. Two down brings up third baseman, Scott Hurt. Picked up an RBI single earlier in the first game this afternoon. And if Kyle could come in here and really shut the door and allow only three runs after the production that Newberg has gotten his first inning, I'm sure that Mike will be pleased and that will give Pate a chance to get into the dugout and try to get their offense going. 1-0 here to Scott Hurt. Eighth batter faced. Then Bennett rounds out the nine. A light rain falling and a breeze out towards left field. So we begin our first inning all over again. Thirty games for Newburgh this year. Twenty-eight have been victories. They lost their first game of the year and their last one prior to here. One zero by Wagner. Comes right back. It's apparent early in the count that Kyle is going to try to establish that breaking pitch. That's twice now he's come in behind in the count where he could get a good pitch over the plate and kind of surprise these Newberg hitters. One ball, one strike, fouls that one off. One, two, the count. Hate going to be see, happy to see this top half of the inning go. Talk about it being frustration to jump on top like that quickly. This is a very, very talented team, this Newburgh edition. We were talking about that earlier this afternoon as we watched the shellacking, so to speak. Had a practice game in front of us. One ball, two strikes. Trying to get the outs both on Cades. This one into right field. It's Todd Chase slipping. That'll score a fourth for Newberg Camperman. I believe Chase, as he started to move, slipped on the wet grass. We've had a little bit of rain, not much as far as the downpour is concerned, but right when we started this second game, a little bit of a sprinkle for about five minutes, and that's going to have an effect on some of the outfielders, and you can see as soon as Todd took a step in, lost his footing, and that really caused the ball to get in front of him, no chance at all to get the catch. Brings on the fourth run, and now the number nine hitter here, all coming in the first inning, center fielder Sean Bennett. Newberg almost doubling those hits from a game ago here in the first inning. 
Engelbrecht, Huff, Sobeska, and Hilt. All in. First and third for Kapperman. Through the nine a first time. 1-0 by Kyle Wagner. Misses down low. And they say he got the corner. 1-1. a feeling that maybe Newberg anticipated something like this. Halfway through that first game, they realized that things weren't going their way. Pate was getting a lot of base hits, taking advantage of some of the opportunities by the defensive mistakes by Kapperman. It was more or less just kind of conserve your energy. If we're going to get beat this first game, we really got to get pumped up and ready to play in that second game. One ball, two strikes. Trying to get out of it here. Two by Wagner, and he got him looking. Nine batters later, four in for Newberg. As we move to the bottom half of the first inning, you're watching the championship game of Evansville's sectional American Legion Baseball on TV 52. The Tri-State Rides on Raymond. Raven is where the Tri-State goes for quality tires and friendly service. Raven has the Goodyear tire for you, or your family car, or your pickup truck. Raven is the Tri-State service leader, and our certified technicians can do everything from brakes to computerized alignments with a nationwide guarantee. The Tri-State Rides on Raven. Raven Tire. <laughs> when the party's over, you can keep those good times, safe times, with a designated driver. Maybe you already know that. But many boaters don't seem to know that a designated driver on the water makes a lot of sense, too. So to keep your party afloat safely, designate a driver. Whatever you drive, wherever you drive, it just makes sense. Well, there you see a look at Tom Tice. Has a four-run cushion to the bottom half of the first inning. Championship game, American Legion sectional. Pretty good start for Newberg. Four runs on six base hits. They sent nine hitters to the plate in the top half of the inning. Offensively for Eugene Pate, Adrian Hoskins leading off playing center field. Jim Bochting gets second base hitting second. Chris McCutcheon doing the catching hitting third. Cousin Adam McCutcheon at first base in the cleanup position. Charlie Brown in left field hitting fifth. Todd Chase in right hitting sixth. Jeremy Jones in third base for batting seventh. Drew Bailey at shortstop hitting eighth. And now Kyle Wagner, the pitcher, batting ninth. Tyson Wolf, your battery for Kapperman. Justin Sylvester at first. B.J. Hoff at second. Engelbrecht the shortstop. Scott Hurd at third. Lynch, Bennett, Helt. Left, center, and right field. And for Tom Tice, our first to look at him on the mound in a while. Yeah. Spent some time last year in relief roles a couple times. Really a vital part to have somebody like that on your program because he can give you some quality innings either in the starting role or coming in in relief. Adrian Hoskins, a great afternoon game. His only flaw was he was caught stealing once. And the hardest player to pitch to, who was here this weekend, is now at bat 2-0 the count. Tice tries to find the first. There it is. Two and one, Adrian Hoskins. I mentioned this afternoon he was four for five, reached base six times, scored four runs, had a stolen base. Pate has some work to do from the outset. He gave up four in the top half of the first inning. And Hoskins way ahead, 3-1. Imagine a good afternoon for Hoskins, as it was for Jeremy Jones, who bats seventh in the championship game. Hoskins again taking all the way. Now the count, 3-2. In that first game, 16 runs, 20 base hits for Pate. It was pretty much divided one through nine as far as their offensive con contributions. Adrian on base six times. You mentioned Jeremy Jones. Also, Todd Chase was on base four times, walked twice, and had a couple base hits. We'll do it again. Three and two to Adrian Hoskins. Just joining us late on this Sunday night. Championship of the sectional. American Legion Baseball and Newburgh leads by a score of 4 nothing. Right back at him. One away. And that's one way to shut down any offense from this paintball club is to keep Adrian Hoskins off the bases. 
brings up second baseman Jim Bochting. Pretty good afternoon for him as well after a couple strikeouts leading off the game. Reached base three of his last four times, picked up a single and also an RBI. So after battling there with Hoskins, he comes back to get him. And it's nothing at one here to Bochting. saying all summer it's great to see Jim playing again. One ball, one strike to Bochting. McCutcheon and McCutcheon follow. Chopper here, Justin Zaveska out of Harrison High School. We have two away. Expect to see a lot of ground balls with a pitcher like Tom Tice on the mound because he has such good control. Even though he struggled a little bit with Adrian, that first hitter he faced, he's always going to be in the strike zone, and usually when he gets ahead of the count, he works down. So that's going to force a lot of the paid hitters to hit the ball into the ground. He's going to try to sit him down in order after the biggest inning offensively for Newberg this afternoon. Strike one issued by Tice. He is on, Doug. And he is one that is not going to really overpower you with a big fastball. He has good control, but location, again, is his big thing. And right there is off-speed ability to come back, getting ahead of the count, trying to sneak that off-speed pitch on the inside corner. One ball, one strike here to Chris. Great summer for Chris McCutcheon. 385 is batting average coming into the weekend. Second only to Charlie Brown, who bats 443. Sharper will be a little bit tougher. Jay Engelbrecht, another great summer also for another Harrison product. Three up, three down. We go to the top half of the second inning at the championship of the sectional American Legion Baseball on TV 52. Male pattern baldness, chemotherapy, burns, skin disorders, alopecia, surgery. There are many reasons why men and women lose hair. Whether the loss is minor or substantial, Lou Robichaud and the Hair Replacement Clinic can help. Through years of training, Lou is able to recreate a person's hair color and length that's remarkably natural in looks and feel. Don't be self-conscious about your appearance any longer. Call Lou Robichaud at the Hair Replacement Clinic, 819 West Franklin, 422-1588. Looking for great food, good times, and free entertainment? You'll find it at the 1993 Evansville River Fest, August 4th through 7th on the Main Street Walkway and Riverside Drive. Delicious catfish fiddler dinners and other festival foods. Rides and games for kids, the Office Olympics, live bands featuring the Brown Sisters, Patoka Valley Boys, and others. There's a free kids' fair, classic car show, and fun for everyone. For more information, call 424-2986. Evansville River Fest, August 4th through 7th, downtown Evansville. Nine batters to the plate back in the first inning. Top half of the second. Top of the order, Engelbrecht, Tice, and B.J. Huff. 4 nothing at the sectional championship of American Legion Baseball. Four runs on six base hits in that first inning. Jay led it off with a single, went to second on a stolen base. And that kind of gives everybody an idea that Newberg has really come out ready to play this second game. There was some relief in the eyes of many who follow Newburgh. Asked if we are going to televise that first game. We said before the day began, we televised the deciding game on this Sunday. And I don't think Newburgh had been beaten that, that bad in a number of years. And quick to prove they're not that kind of ball game. They lead 4 nothing here. Six hits in that first inning. Again, Jay Engelbrecht will play baseball next year for the University of Southern Indiana. A coach expected to be named possibly tomorrow. As we mentioned, Friday, one of the two candidates right here at Bossy Field, the head coach of Eugene Paik, Mike Gady. So we wait the first to Engelbrecht. That's one again, one of the four who scored back in the first inning. Not the way you want to begin the second, ball one. Kyle Wagner in for his second inning of work. Adam Hines, the starter, got one out through the first five hitters that he faced. That the on-deck batter, Tom Tice, struck him out looking, but gave up four singles. Four, all four of those singles came around to score. 2-0 oh here to Jay Engelbrecht. Winner goes to Rockport. 3-0 oh to Jason.
Wagner runs into trouble. Like I said, you have a lot more help in the bullpen. And Gady will not waste a lot of time. Four straight balls to Jay Engelbrecht. And right now, Newberg doing basically the same thing that Pate did in that first game this afternoon. The leadoff man getting on base and then starting to move things around. Excellent hit and run opportunity right now for Newberg with Tice at the plate. A very speedy Engelbrecht on at first. As we've so often said about most teams entering in American Legion baseball, does not let up on the offensive nine. Huff to follow Tice, then Savesco. Both Huff and Savesco have had an excellent summer here. Wagner a little bit of trouble to begin the second. Four straight balls to Engelbrecht, and Tice will be taking all the way on this one. Engelbrecht out by a couple, is quickly checked back. And you know his speed. So there's the obvious threat to move and maybe early. And right now, Kyle just worried about keeping him close at first base, trying to cut down that lead. Comes back after the four balls, strike one on the outside. Nothing at one to Tom Tice. Engelbrecht's lead is out by five. Engelbrecht wastes no time in going. The hit and run on, and McCutcheon tries to get Engelbrecht not even close. Not when Jay gets a jump like that, you're not going to get him. Second stolen base in this ball game for Jay, and a pretty good pitch for him to run on. It was a breaking pitch on the inside part of the plate. Tom Tice did his job at the plate trying to get a swing through, just protect him a little bit, create some confusion in front of the catcher Chris McCutcheon and with a breaking pitch like that Chris has to wait until it gets to him before he can throw it. Engelbrecht on his way to third. Jekyll and Hyde, Hate and Newberg in game two of this championship series. And a good job by Chris right now, taking time and just trying to settle Kyle down a little bit. You can tell that this is going to be a pressure situation for every pitcher involved. Tom a little bit more at ease right now with the four-run cushion out there. So Kyle not really familiar with pressure situations like this at this type of level. So Chris just trying to settle him down a little bit. He's ahead of the hitter one and two. You need to concentrate on getting him. One ball, two strikes. Newberg trying to strike again. Got even two apiece. Last year, Newberg had to come back and beat Pate twice. Like I said, they won the state championship later on and showed up well in the Nationals before bowing out to Arlington Heights, Illinois. Two and two to Tice. One knocked out of play. We'll do it again. Right now, no work going in the bullpen. So for the moment, Gady's going to go with Kyle Wagner. I mentioned earlier that Mike is not going to waste a lot of time in making switches. You still want to give that pitcher out there a little bit of time to get loose and to adjust the situation. A good pitch right there, breaking pitch on the inside corner. That is the third one we've had tonight looking. And we have one away on that inside corner. Newberg fans let the umpire know how they feel about that one. One out brings up the second baseman, B.J. Huff, singled and scored back an inning ago in the first. 90 feet away, Engelbrecht, though, with just one away. Right back again comes Wagner, nothing in one. 4 nothing in favor of Newberg. This is the championship game of American Legion Baseball sectional. Huff flirted with the batting average of 500 for a good part of this summer, Doug. Really had an excellent spring for Chuck Hawkins and the Castle Knights. Voted first team all state in the IHSAA and has continued to do that pretty much here all summer long for Joe Liss and Newberg. One and one here to BJ. Justin Savesco is on deck. Trying to come right back. Wagner, and he does with a one two count. The breaking pitch, really the only thing that is working for Kyle. You don't want to get in a situation where you constantly come back with that because the Newberg hitters are going to get a little bit wise to that, and they're going to sit on that pitch. That's why you need to work your fastball in and try to get over for a strike as well. He got him. That is the fourth strikeout tonight by Wagner, and he came in 
with Jim Lynch back in the first inning. Seven batters, four strikeouts for Wagner. He's given up two base hits and a lot of walk. Brings up the cleanup hitter for Newburgh. Justin Sylvester had an RBI single and scored back in that first. Watch how he just nails those corners. On the inside, low again for strike one. Rain falling again at Bossy Field. And the breeze blows straight out. Nothing in two. Wagner will impress you, as he will next year for the Memorial Tigers. Two good breaking pitches. Now it'll be interesting to see if he comes back with another one or if he tries to bust a fastball on the inside. After Ringelbrecht walked, stole a base. Wild pitch got him to third. He's going to try to sit him down, and order he does so. Strikeout number five for Wagner. We move to the bottom half of the second inning. Sectional championship of American Legion Baseball on TV 52. Kenny Kent Northside is celebrating summer with savings on every Mazda in stock. It's a summer saving celebration and your chance to save like never before. This Mazda protege with air, tilt, AM, FM cassette and more is yours for only $10,121. Mazda means quality and value and the best bumper to bumper warranty in the business. And during our summer saving celebration, it means savings on every Mazda in stock. Kenny Kent Mazda, Northside at Diamond and Heidelbach. You just get more from us. Where does he get his information about drugs, alcohol, and sex? One day he's a child, and the next he's making decisions that could risk his life. It's a helpless feeling for a parent because you can't always be with him to keep him safe. But you can teach him how to be safe, and those words will stay with him, even when you can't. We can help you talk about AIDS. Call for a guide. McCutcheon, Charlie Brown and Todd Chase, bottom half of the second inning. I'm Duran Smith alongside Doug Emick. Championship of the sectional. One, two, three in the first inning for Tom Tyson, Newberg. All three on ground balls. Four, five, and six do up here for Pate. Adam McCutcheon picked up a couple of base hits, actually three in that afternoon win over this same Newberg ball club. Well, rather easy inning for Tyson with a four-run cushion. in the last inning or the top of this inning. Again, Engelbrecht walks, stole a base, and reached third on the wild pitch, and then three straight strikes. More strikeouts by Wagner. And he has been impressive here early. Wanted it on the inside, didn't get it. 3-0 and here to Adam McCutcheon. Hard-hitting Charlie Brown on deck. 3-1 and the count. Tice does not waste a lot of time up there either. He is a pitcher that works very quickly. As soon as he gets the ball back from Toby Wolf, he's looking in for his next sign. First walk issued by Tom brings up the number five hitter, left fielder Charlie Brown. Well, his numbers speak for himself, Charlie Brown. Batting average up around 450 now. As he came to the weekend, 443. Adam McCutcheon moves and moves quickly. Got a good jump. Throw right there, but off. On his way to third, Adam. And so the first to reach for Payne in the bottom of the second, also 90 feet away. We mentioned in Friday night's game, aggressive base running, and that's going to make things happen. That's exactly what happened right there. A pretty good jump by Adam. Throw towards the shortstop side of second base by Toby Wolf. Got past him and also B.J. Huff. Jason Engelbrecht couldn't get it kept in the infield. Went out to center field, so Adam got up and went over to third. Now head coach Joe List out of the dugout. Again, just kind of a conversation to get everybody's head back into the ball game right here. You have a four-run cushion. And that can disappear rather quickly. Three base hits for Charlie this afternoon in the first game. Picked up an RBI, also scored a couple runs. And this is a prime situation where you want it with a big power man at the plate. Runner in scoring position just 90 feet away. One ball, one strike to Charlie Brown. Three play.
players that really impressed me this summer. All out of Central High School, Charlie Brown, Todd Chase, and Brandon Duval over at Funkhauser. And this one's got a shot quickly moving over. Tom Held in right field as he slips on the wet grass, easily scoring Adam McCutcheon, and Evansville Pate is on the board. Good job of hitting right there by Charlie, and that's really all he needed to do was get the ball up in the air, deep enough in the outfield to give Adam a chance to score from third. So now the first run across for Pate. One down brings up the right fielder, Todd Chase. Todd Chase, numbers just climbed the last month of the season. Batting average now up to 338. Jeremy Jones on deck, as I mentioned, a great afternoon for him. Drew Bailey, Adam Hines, who is long gone. Now has Kyle Wagner batting in the nine, rounding out the nine. Todd, a couple base hits and three plate appearances this afternoon. Also walked twice, picked up an RBI, and scored two runs. Very slippery out there, as we've seen twice. Jay Engelbrecht. One of the best shortstops in the area. We have two away. Seeing probably two of the better ones around in southern Indiana today, and in Jay Engelbrecht and also Drew Bailey. Both have very good range, a little bit more experience as far as Jason is concerned. And we've seen in the last three or four seasons for Andy Rice and Harrison really surprise you by getting to a lot of balls, not necessarily just stopping it, but coming up and making a good throw. Drew Bailey, pretty much from a media standpoint, unknown until this year, stepped in for Robbie Kent and has done an outstanding job. He will be back next year for Quentin Merkel. 2-0 to Jeremy Jones. One in here for Payne, a 4-1 ball game in the bottom half of the second inning. We will go nine in this championship game of the American Legion sectional. In the afternoon for Jeremy, three for three, he was on base five times, picked up a couple RBIs. Starting to do it again with the 3 0 pitch right there inside for ball four. So now another runner for Pate brings up the number eight hitter, Drew Bailey. So fifth batter here faced by Tice after an easy first three up, three down. Pate trying to come right back at him. One earlier today, 16 to two. And out hitting Camperman, 20 to four. Waiting the first to Drew Bailey. Jones moves out by a couple. Another name that came into play a lot this year for Bossy High School, Jeremy Jones. Another one that is really becoming into his own, and we've seen what Bossy has been able to do the last couple years. Six members of the Bulldogs are part of this American Legion team for Pate this year. One and one here. Tice, a little bit of trouble here in the bottom half of the second inning. Pate trying to go to 30 and 7. Newberg enters 28 and 2. Jones again set to move out again from first base. One and one here to Bailey. Wagner on deck. High for ball two. Really the first time that we've seen Tom struggle with his control. Went 3-2 to Hoskins in the first inning before he bounced right back to the box. Walked Adam McCutcheon to lead this inning off and now falling in behind on Drew Bailey. On his way to third is Jeremy Jones. Play down here at second. Second and third for Evansville Pate. Good piece of hitting right there by Drew. Also very alert base running. Jeremy Jones all the way over to third, third base. The throw coming in from right fielder Tom Held a little bit towards the infield side of third base. Got hurt, got the ball, tried to get the relay back to second. But a quick Drew Bailey sliding in just in front of the tag. So two gone, but two on here for Pate. And a base hit changes the face of this ball game this early. 4-1, one already in. Six batter faced by Tice. We have seen the nine now for Eugene Pate. Missed high again on the upside. One ball, one strike. 
limited at bats for Kyle this year coming into the tournament. Six at bats had picked up three base hits, also drawn three walks. Newberg gets out of it cheaply. Lead Pate by a score of four to one. We've played two at the sectional championship. American Legion Baseball's Sunday night on TV 52. Well, it's a whole new world as far as investments are concerned. We've got the best programs for our customers. Plus investment options no one would ever expect from a bank. And don't forget savings on brokerage services. Plus our regular CDs, step-up rate CD, and bonus CD. And we have mutual funds. Make them available at all our offices. Dealing with professional people they trust. People with integrity. Investment opportunities from citizens. The bank that's leading the way. This is really important to all of our customers. You know, when hopeful romantics tell their secret crushes how they feel, he's had a crush on you forever. When I saw this man, my heart went to my feet, and I said, oh! Dancing with her that night, what'd you feel? There's humor. Actually, she wouldn't let me touch her too I much. didn't ask that. <laughs> Romance? Ever since I saw you, I knew you were my dream. Sometimes rejection. But I already have a boyfriend. The results can be outrageous on infatuation. I'm Darren Smith with Doug Emick, top half of the third inning here at the championship of American Legion Baseball sectional. 4-1 in favor of Newburgh. 5, 6, and 7 to up here for Newburgh. Tom Help, Jim Lynch, and Toby Wolf. Kyle Wagner on for his second plus inning of work. Came in with two runs already across the plate back in the first inning. Lynch was the first hitter he faced, gave up a couple base hits in that first inning. Issued a walk to Jay Engelbrecht to lead off the second, but the others have gone down via the strikeout. Yeah. Five strikeouts now through the two plus innings. So second time for Helt. This is the part of the lineup. Actually beginning back with B.J. Huff that rung off four straight hits back in that first. Wagner facing Helt for the first time. Now he has seen the nine himself. Lynch is on deck. Wagner's been hot with the arm as far as the strikeouts go and misses that time on the inside with ball one. Tom tonight one for one. Picked up a single, also had an RBI and scored a run in that four-run first inning for Newberg. 1-0 pitch by Wagner. This takes off. And it is heading foul and out of play. One long strike, one, one one the count. And most of the success that we have seen from Kyle has been with his breaking pitch, finding that inside part of the plate. I think right now trying to establish a little bit of ground out there with his fastball so that he's got both pitches working and can really keep those Newberg hitters off balance. 1-1. One, one. Now low on the outside for ball two. During what is our final broadcast of our 92-93 sports season. We talk to you next on the 25th of August, later this month. Happy August, by the way. Three and a half weeks. It's three and a half weeks off. Jim Bochting, we have one away. Game number 109. 109 in our regular season, and as we were talking about earlier, it's been an enjoyable 92-93 sports season for us. Been to Indianapolis a couple of times. Memorial Tigers winning back in October the state championship in soccer, and of course, most recently in baseball at Bush Stadium. Rights and Memorial in the semi-state this year. Now, of course, last November. We get set to do it all over again. The 93-94 sports season begins on August 25th right here. Wrapping up with American Legion Baseball. This is left fielder Jim Lynch. One for one, had an RBI single in the first inning. Made a pinch hitter appearance in that first game this afternoon. One ball, one strike. Wolf, Burton, Bennett. Down the nine a second time for Newberg. 1-1 one, one pitch. Nail that outside corner again. And that is 
a pitch that has been working for him since he came in back in the first inning, and it looks like he is really going to that one. He needs to get a big strike. Working on the inside, and that time right there you saw on the outside corner. One, two, he got him. Strikeout number six for Kyle Wagner. There's two away. I mentioned his numbers coming in through the 26 plus innings he had worked. He's averaging about a strikeout per inning, 27 strikeouts, only five walks. So that has been one of his positive attributes to the pitching staff this year. Very good control. So for a second time, here is Toby Wolf. He got caught looking. Two away, top half of the third inning. We're going nine at Bossy Field. Rain is let up. Breathes out towards left field. Fouls that one off. Nothing in two. Wagner looking for strikeout number seven here. Wolf was the first back in the first inning. We've had a little taste of Wagner here and there over the past couple of years. And his best yet to come next season. Looking for strikeout number seven to sit him down in order of first time on the outside. He got him swinging away. We move to the bottom half of the third inning. Four to one in favor of Newburgh. American Legion Baseball on TV 52. Cashing a check was hard enough when all you needed was two pieces of ID. But now... I see you have a blue card, yellow card, green card, and gold card, Mr. Gray. But here you need a green grocer red card. So follow the magenta line to the blue counter and have Mrs. White green light your red card. All you really need is the bonus check card from Old National Bank. It's accepted virtually all over town. Because it's not a check cashing card, it's the card that works like a check. Only better. From Old National, your bank for life. The blue is you, Mr. Gray. Some people are afraid airbags might go off when they're not supposed to. But look. See, they don't go off when you're hitting the side. They don't go off when you're hitting the rear, either. That's what seatbelts are for. In fact, airbags only go off when you're hitting the front. But you have to be going about 11 miles per hour. See, you don't need to worry about airbags. Unless you don't have one. Bottom half of the third inning, top of the order for Evansville, Eugene Pate, trailing 4-1 to Newburgh Kafferman. Hostins, Bochting, and Chris McCutcheon, 1-2-3 in the order. A little bit of trouble for starter Tom Tice back in that second inning. Gave up two walks, one of those coming around to score the only Pate run. Adrian tonight, 0 for 1, bounced back to Tom back in the first inning. Went up one hit through the nine, had a double by Drew Bailey back in the second. First to Adrian, strike one. Usually Adrian's taking on that first. Very tough to pitch to. We talked about in our earlier games. Very small strike zone. Does a good job of getting on base any way he can in the first game. Had four base hits. Also drew a walk. Leads this ball club with base on balls for the entire year. Two balls and a strike to Adrian Hoskins. Again, paid 29 and 7 into this championship of the sectional. Newburgh 28 and 2. Again on the corner. Missed down low, 3 1. Boonville and Funkhauser both eliminated earlier. One of these two here tonight go to Rockport next weekend. Walks Adrian Hoskins. And like we've seen for Newburgh, the times that Jay Engelbrecht has got on base in the leadoff position, things have started for them back in that first inning. So hopefully for Eugene Pate fans, that's kind of a sign of what's going to happen here in the third. Second baseman Jim Bochting 0 for 1, bounced out to the first baseman Justin Savesca back in the first. Hoskins out by four and Tice quickly to check him back. Most of the time, Adrian will be moving. Almost had him at first. Anytime Adrian gets
gets on base, he is always going to draw a lot of attention just because of the speed and his ability to read the pitches and get a good jump for a stolen base. So you expect a lot of pickoff attempts over at first just to try to cut down that lead a little bit. Still awaiting the first pitch to Jim Bochtick. Tice, no problem in the first. Again, facing the three batters. Face six. Back of the second. Base hit to right field. In comes Tom Held. Hoskins holds it second. First and second for Eugene Pate. Nobody out. Fake steal right there by Adrian. Took a couple steps and then stopped. And a good base hit right there by Bochtick. His first in tonight's ball game. First and second now brings up the number three hitter, catcher Chris McCutcheon. And another trip to the mound from head coach Joe Liss of Newburgh. He may be bringing in Jim Lynch from left field. That's the move. We'll take a timeout. Here in the bottom half of the third inning, a 4-1 ball game threatening here, Evansville Paint at the sectional championship of American Legion Baseball on TV 52. You know, when hopeful romantics tell their secret crushes how they feel. He's had a crush on you forever. When I saw this man, my heart went to my feet, and I said, oh! Dancing with her that night, what'd you feel? There's humor. Actually, she wouldn't let me touch her too much. I didn't ask <laughs> that. Romance? Ever since I saw you, I knew you were my dream. Sometimes rejection. But I already have a boyfriend. The results can be outrageous on infatuation. Some people are afraid airbags might go off when they're not supposed to. But look. See, they don't go off when you're hitting the side. They don't go off when you're hitting the rear, either. That's what seatbelts are for. In fact, airbags only go off when you're hitting the front. But you have to be going about 11 miles per hour. See, you don't need to worry about airbags. Unless you don't have one. Well, here's Jim Lynch into the pitching for Newbert Camperman. With two aboard, will be charged to Tom Tyson. Now plays right field. Tom Held moves from right into left. Defensive changes for Newbert Camperman. Jim, another one that relies a lot on his control. Very good fastball. One of the big parts of the reasons that Harrison was so successful this past year. Pretty good control, and again, very good fastball, and sets it up real well with his off-speed stuff. Jim could have went two or three innings with anybody. I watched him so many times come out strong and then just kind of fade off a little bit or, or lose a lot of what he had. And I don't know if that's because his approach is so intense for those three or four innings, it seems like he might lose control or once he gets shaken a little bit, he kind of falls apart maybe for an inning or so. But this is a crucial situation now. you got first and second, nobody out. He does have a three-run lead to work with, so he doesn't have to be as fine maybe as in a closer game than this. But still, when you get to the championship level like this, you want to come in with your best stuff. Winner here goes to Rockport, Hargis Field. From there, it's Terre Haute. Terre Haute, the only team getting a buy into this year's state because they host the state a couple of years ago. Funkhauser hosted out here at Bossy Field. And Highland took them two games and won the championship. Last year's state champion is right here, and they have the lead 4-1. It's Newburgh. Coming to bat, catcher Chris McCutcheon. 0 for 1, bounced out to the shortstop, Jay Engelbrecht, back in the first inning. A chance for Payne to bring this close in a hurry here. Fall behind 4-0 in the first inning. Newburgh with something to prove and did. They have the lead 4-1. One in back in the second. Again, Pate threatening for more here. Chris lays down the bunt, and it's a good bunt. A good bunt. Bases loaded for Evansville. Thought maybe if he was going to bunt, it was going to be for a sacrifice, but really surprised the Newburgh defense. Scott Hurt playing back at third base. The only player that had a chance to get that ball and maybe get it out was the pitcher Jim Lynch. And with his momentum going off to first base, laid down perfectly. Now the bag's full. Cleanup hitter Adam McCutcheon walked and scored back in the second at the plate. That is the third hit here for Eugene Pate. Second in the inning. Now Lynch in a little bit of trouble here. 
See if he can work himself out of it. Nobody out with those bases loaded. You figure at least one's going to score before they get the three. This will be a key out right here if he can get him to strike out. One ball, two strikes to Adam McCutcheon. Defensively, Newberg pretty much playing all the way back, except exception of Scott Hurd at third base, playing in even with the grass. So if you do get a ground ball on the left side at shortstop or even on the right side, they're going to try to turn two in the middle. 2-2 two, two pitch. Missed it down low. A walk is a run here. Three and two to Adam McCutcheon. Batting average coming into the weekend, 320. Three base hits earlier today also picked up a couple RBI. Way down in the dirt. Walks in a run. We have got a 4-2 ball game. Bases remain loaded. Still nobody out. And that was a problem we saw from Newberg in the first game this afternoon. A lot of walks, especially after that third inning. Three in the fourth inning when three runs were scored. Also one in the fourth, one in the sixth, a couple in the seventh. Now Mike Giddy calling down Charlie Brown. Again, a situation where Charlie is going to look for a pitch he can drive. Would like to get an extra base hit, but mainly concerned with getting it in the air deep enough to allow the runner from third, Jim Bockting, a chance to tag up and score. 4-2 ball game, way down in the dirt. I would take a couple more looks at Jim Lynch before I swing at one. Quickly out to talk to Lynch, Toby Wolf. I think we're in for a doozy here. The way championship games should be. You don't like to see any team skunk another as we saw earlier today. Unless you're rooting for that particular team. But 16-2 to earlier today. As we mentioned, Eugene Payne has scored 33 runs in their last two games. I haven't heard that term used in a while. Skunk? They were in control most of the afternoon. And we saw Newberg jump out to a four-run lead here in the top of the first inning here. And now Pate trying to get something going. Bases loaded, nobody out. 2-0, and oh, taking all the way. There is strike one. Charlie Brown with the bases loaded. Again, nobody out. But Evansville trailing. Down in the dirt. Behind Toby Wolf. In comes the third for Eugene Pate. All runners move up. First base open for Charlie Brown. He's ahead of the count, 3-1. And that is a big pitch in favor of Pate right now because that eliminates the possibility of a double play in the middle for Newberg. You've got second and third. Lynch continues to struggle with his location. That one down and low. Another walk. Lynch may not be around much longer if this trend continues. Base is loaded, a 4-3 ball game. Another walk given up by Chip. Second one since he has been in. All three batters that he has faced has reached. They are on the bases now. First, second, and third. This is right fielder Todd Chase at the plate. Todd Chase down to Jay Engelbrecht back in the second inning. Lynch facing his fourth batter here. Has given up a single and two walks. Knocked out of play. Nothing in two. run 90 feet away still nobody out struck him out and that is the biggest out to date so far this afternoon seems like he settled down a little bit after the first three hitters he faced three pitches three strikes brings up third baseman jeremy jones walked back in the second was left stranded at third one down with a double play opportunity or two on the field there is strike one. Right back comes Jim Lynch. Drew Bailey is on deck. Seventh batter here faced by the pitching of Newberg. Tom Tice began the inning. Walked Hoskins and Buckton got the single. This one, a chopper to N.J. Engelbrecht. Try to turn two to get out of it. Not in time. Tie ball game. Tied up at four. Runners at the corners for Evansville. 
because the ball had such a high hop, Jay Engelbrecht, shortstop, had to play back and wait for the ball to come to him. He really couldn't charge it because it was an in-between hop. That really eliminated the possibility of a double play. A good turnover to B.J. at second, who had to wait just a second and then get a throw over to Justin at first, but the speed of Jeremy enabled him to beat it out. Drew Bailey. Runner goes. Snuck right behind Jim Lynch. Lynch had no idea that Jeremy Jones was moving. That is usually a play that you see a pitcher will fake to third. His pivot foot will come off of the rubber, and then he'll turn around and fake a throw to first. But he went to fake to third, didn't even look at first. And Jeremy Jones was breaking as soon as he saw the move to third, went in. Now second and third, still two out. And a big opportunity here for Drew Bay to get a couple more runs. Already one for one tonight. Second and third, nothing and two. Two outs on the Newburgh side. Game tied at four here in the bottom half of the third inning. Watching the championship game of the Evansville American Legion sectional tonight. Breaks down low for it. Justin Saveska has to go to Lynch. Lynch trying to hold on. He drops the ball. Two in for Pate. And Evansville has taken the lead by a score of six to four. Just a good job of hitting right there by Drew. That shows you what happens when you put the ball in play. You make things happen. Justin made a good play to get over and get the ball. Coming way off of the bag over at first base. Pitcher Jim Lynch trying to get over and cover. And the throw down in the dirt, unable to really come up with a clean one. So six unanswered runs by Eugene Pate. Five here in the third inning. They had one back in the second. And they are back in control for the moment. Ten runs scored already. Down to second base, and it's into the outfield. And nice save there as B.J. Huff had to move over. Bailey okay down at second. Third stolen base of the game for Pate. First one for Drew. Pitcher Kyle Wagner at the plate, lined out to the second baseman, Huff, back in the second. Second to Kyle Wagner, and this chopper right back to Jim Lynch. We move to the top half of the fourth inning. Six for Evansville. Championship game, American Legion sectional on TV 52. The Tri-State Rides on Raymond. Raven is where the Tri-State goes for quality tires and friendly service. Raven has the Goodyear tire for you, or your family car, or your pickup truck. Raven is the Tri-State service leader, and our certified technicians can do everything from brakes to computerized alignments with a nationwide guarantee. The Tri-State Rides on Raven. Doug Emick back out at Bossy Field one last time here in the summer of 93. American Legion Baseball's sectional championship for you this evening. How quickly things can change. Five runs back on the bottom of that third inning, and Evansville has taken the lead 6-4. to four. And You kind of figure that momentum-wise, Pate is on a roll right now, but you also look at the job that Kyle Wagner has done since coming in in the first inning. Adam Hines, the starter, faced the first five hitters in this Newburgh lineup. Registered one out, gave up four base hits, and then Wagner came in. Seven strikeouts through the two-plus innings that he has worked. Do up here for Newburgh in the top of the fourth. Eight, nine, and one. Scott Hurt, Sean Bennett, and Jay Engelbrecht. Newburgh jumps on top early, 4-0. Right back comes Pate. They have now scored 39 runs in about not quite two and a half games now. 17-3 Saturday night over Boonville, 16-2 earlier today. Wagner fires in the first, strike one. Scott, an early 
Charlie, one for one, picked up an RBI single to right field back in the first inning. Responsible for that fourth run since that time. Kyle's really shut the door on the offense. He's only allowed one base runner since that point. A walk to Jay Engelbrecht in the second inning. One and one here, the count. Right back comes Wagner's strikeout ratio has been something, hasn't it? One ball, two strikes from Wagner, looking for strikeout number eight. One, two. Had to reach for that one. This may be some trouble. Jim Buckting quickly has to move over. And he'll have to eat that one. Scott Hurt on for Newberg. And they rule it E4 here. Tough play right there for Jim. It was kind of a cue ball coming off the end of the bat, as you could see. Scott was just trying to get a piece of the bat on the ball and stay alive. Kyle Wagner not able to get off the mound and try to get over and stop it. A long way to come in for Bochting. And hit the heel of his glove. If he had filled it cleanly, it would have been a very close play at first. Scott Hurt out by four steps over at first. Wagner missing the first, ball one. Through the nine twice for Newberg. Bats have been cooled a little bit here. Pass inning and a half. Here's the 1-0 by Wagner. She misses high on the inside, 2-0 the count. This is center fielder Sean Bennett, 0-for-1, a strikeout victim back in the first inning. And really the first time that we've seen Kyle fall behind in the hitter since that walk to Jay Engelbrecht to lead off the second. Wagner falls behind 3-0. Eight leading at Newburgh by a score of 6-4 if you're joining us late on this Sunday night. Has to be there. Comes right back Wagner. He is going to be one of the better ones next year, Doug, in the area. I'm talking about Kyle Wagner, the pitcher. And I think the education or the exposure that he is getting this summer is really going to help his confidence going into his senior year next year. Comes right back on that inside corner. He has that pitch down. 3-2 to Bennett. Twelve batters, seven strikeouts. Looking for number eight here. 3-2 by Wagner. He got him. Chalk up another K for Kyle Wagner. We have one away in the top half of the fourth inning. And right now he is in control out there. Really spotting the ball well as far as location, putting it in the spot that Newberg can't get a bat on the ball. Back to the top now, and Jay Engelbrecht, one for one. He's been off base twice, singled and scored back in the first. Walk was left stranded at third back in the second. Down low for ball one. Like we've been seeing, even during his high school career, he just finds a way to get on. to get out by a couple over at first base. And Wagner comes on the outside quarter. Got even one apiece. One of the Newburgh contingent here. Not happy to all with the umpiring. What else is new? Drew Bailey trying to get the force. Does. He'll be satisfied with one. Down goes Hurt. Engelbrecht safe on the fielder's choice at first base. Brings up Tom Tice. And that is a big out because Jay can be very dangerous at the plate. Tom Tice 0 for 2. He's got caught looking twice. First time by Adam Hines, the starter. Back in the second by Kyle. Two down here at top half of the fourth. Scheduled to go nine tonight. Eight over Newburgh. The defending champions. 6-4. different game this becomes at time when it's played here at Bossy Field. Not quite the launching pad it is at Castle High School. That is definitely a hitter's ballpark. Hey, 
One ball, one strike. Tom Tice. You can see Kyle continues to go with that off-speed pitch, and that's what's been working for him for the most part tonight. Jay Engelbrecht, always a threat to go over at first base, has already got two stolen bases today. 1-1 one, one pitch down in the dirt for ball two. Fourth batter faced here by Kyle Wagner in this the top half of the fourth inning. Back to the top of the order in the bottom of this inning for Eugene Pate. This is 2-1 by Kyle Wagner. That's out of play. 2-2 the count. He's looking for strikeout number nine. Newberg looking for a win number 29. And a trip to the Rockport Regionals. Two two by Wagner, runner moving, and Cutchin drives like a shot down at second base. Fast moving Jay Engelbrecht. That was just a matter of time, and now three two to Tom Tice. And no chance at all to get Jay on that pitch. He got such a good jump. Another pitch, a breaking pitch on the inside part of the plate. And that is twice now that he has picked the right pitch to go on. That time, probably the easiest of the three. Three and two here to Tom Tice. Strikeout number nine for Kyle Wagner. He faced four here on the fourth. We go to the bottom of 6-4. Evansville paint. Championship game of American Legion's sectional on TV 52. There's a notion going around that in business today, the only thing that matters is price. We think service is equally important. James Will Insurance. Writing property and casualty insurance for your business is only a part of what our business is all about. James Will Insurance. What a terrific week for the Joan Rivers Show. Monday serves a fresh behind-the-scenes dish of celebrity sex lives. On Tuesday, the amorous adventures of people who found each other during vacation romances. Wednesday rocks the house with super hot disco darling RuPaul. On Thursday, experts examine the twisted minds of mass murderers. And Friday wraps up with the creators of reality television. Plus, Joan serves up her daily dose of gossip, gossip, gossip. Don't miss the Joan Rivers Show. the fourth inning. I'm Darren Smith with Doug Emig. 6-4 ball game in favor of Evansville, Eugene Pate. All right now, a meeting on the hill between Jim Lynch and catcher Toby Wolf. Head coach Joe Liss out there as well. And it appears that maybe an injury to Jim for whatever reason looks like action down in the bullpen and he's going to bring in a new pitcher. Right here at the top of the, well, the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's take this time out. American Legion Baseball sectional championship continues on TV 52. Terrific week for the Joan Rivers Show. Monday serves a fresh behind-the-scenes dish of celebrity sex lives. On Tuesday, the amorous adventures of people who found each other during vacation romances. Wednesday rocks the house with super hot disco darling RuPaul. On Thursday, experts examine the twisted minds of mass murderers. And Friday wraps up with the creators of reality television. Plus, Joan serves up her daily dose of gossip, gossip, gossip. Don't miss the Joan Rivers Show. Well, that's Donnie Shumwell on the hill. Third pitcher news tonight by Joe Liss. Here in the bottom half of the fourth inning, 6-4, Eugene Payton. And apparently, Jim O.K. stays in the ballgame, moves back to left field. Tom Help moves back to right field, and Tom Tyves moves from right field over to center. Sean Bennett out of the game. 
squeeze there by Joe Liss as we're getting set to begin the bottom half of the fourth inning. Two up here for Peyton, the bottom half of the fourth. One, two, three. Adrian Hoskins, Jim Bochting, and Chris McCutcheon. Try to enter a 6-4. They face nine back in that third inning. So far, that is the inning that has really hurt Newberg. Five runs on only two base hits. Three walks given up in that inning. And two of those three walks came around to score. 1-0 to Adrian Hoskins. Donnie Shemwell. One ball, one strike. Taking this one to right field. That's Tom Hilt. Back over there again. We have one away. And that's a good way to shut down this paid offense is to keep Adrian off the bases. Now 0 for 2 brings up second baseman Jim Bochting. He's 1 for 2. Last time up singled and scored in that five-run third. Expecting a good game here. We've got it. and one here to Bonkting. Donnie's another one of those pitchers that is very effective when he is on. He's got good location, a pretty good fastball, but I think his bread and butter pitch is his off-speed pitch, and he tried to get one right there on the outside corner against Jim. Right back to Donnie Shemwell. Two away. Brings up the catcher, Chris McCutcheon. He's one for two. Bounced out to Jay down at shortstop in the first inning and reached on a base hit bunt and came around to score an inning to go. Adam McCutcheon on deck has walked and scored twice. Two away here, bottom of the fourth inning. Going nine tonight, championship of the sectional. Bringing up Scott Hurt from third. Going to have to hurry this throw. They hold it up. Wise move by Scott Hurt. Great bunt by Chris McCutcheon. That's a two-out single for him. Second time he has really surprised the Newburgh defense, and both times he's laid down a perfect bunt. The first one in between the third baseman and the pitcher's mound. No chance at all for Jim Lynch at that time to make a play at first base, and that time catching Scott Hurt and playing back a little bit at third. Adam McCutcheon on twice, scored twice. Chris out by a couple over at first. Missing on the outside low for ball one. Charlie Brown on deck. Mentioned Shirley's numbers, batting around 450 these days. And again, Adam came into the weekend batting 320. Shimwell fires on the outside for ball two. Sixteen two the score earlier this afternoon. All Eugene Pate over Newburgh. Two and one. Donnie's another pitcher that does not fall behind very often, but when he does, he comes back with big pitches when he needs to. This is a key out right here, even though two are out. You got the number four hitter, Adam McCutcheon, at the plate. You don't want to get Charlie Brown to the plate with runners in scoring position. Two and one by Shemwell. Came right back on that outside corner. Shemwell, a very much controlled pitcher, Duncan. Relies a lot on his spots, and you can see right now doing a good job finding that outside corner. And he mixes his locations well. Works the outside a couple times. Now probably going to try to come back on the inside. Struck him out. So down goes Adam McCutcheon. And we've still got a 6-4 ball game in favor of Evansville Pate. We move to the top half of the fifth inning at the sectional championship of American Legion Baseball on TV 52. This is the Computer Mail Order Store. 
Our many years of computer experience in the Evansville area has shown us that each person's computer needs are different. Our staff will carefully assess your particular computer needs and suggest the appropriate system and software for you. We are locally owned and offer support and service after the sale. We have a large selection of high quality computers and most accessories in stock at the most competitive prices around. Computer mail order stores, stop in and see us. We're on Washington near Bakey. When home is not a safe place to be, when mommy or daddy is the one who causes the hurts to happen, when children have a reason to be afraid, where can they go? For a lucky few, there is the villages. The children who come to the villages are given a second chance. The villages gives them a home, a community, and somebody to belong to. I'm Darren Smith with Doug Emig, top half of the fifth inning, 6-4 Evansville. 3-4 and 5 do up here for Newberg, Kapperman, B.J. Huff, Justin Saveska, and Tom Held. And with the winner here going to Rockport, they represent this section of Wells. We've been saying throughout the year, this has got to be the toughest in the state of Indiana. When you look at the four teams involved, and we kind of alluded to that fact during our regular season and in Friday night's game, which was Pate's first loss in this tournament against Boonville. Four very good ball clubs, and you saw Boonville come in with an 11 and 18 record. Many consider that to be an upset with the 76, 7 to 6 victory over Pate Friday night, but you get a ball club like that that really puts together big innings when they need to. And you look at these four clubs, any one of these clubs would represent this Evansville section well, and more times than not, go on to win the regional. First pitch to B.J. Huff here in the top half of the fifth inning for strike one. Got to congratulate Mac LaRue on a great year also with Funkhauser. A very young and experienced Legion team did very well this year. A lot better than I think he even expected at the beginning of the season. Drew Bailey trying to hold on and get him in time. mentioned earlier the range of these two shortstops and we've seen good plays by both first Jay Engelbrecht and now a great play there by Drew Bailey at shortstop a lot of times you think those guys aren't even going to get to the ball much less stop it and be able to regain their composure wheel and get a good strong throw over to first first to Justin Saveska here in the top of the fifth ball one Justin one for two tonight, had an RBI single and scored back in the first inning. Strikeout victim back in the second. Low on the outside corner, 2-0 and now by Wagner. Nine strikeouts to his name. He came in six batters into the game. And he faced Jim Lynch in the first inning. Slow start for Adam Hines, and Gady wasted no time in getting Hines out of there. Adam McCutcheon. Was dropped by Bonkin, who came over. Maybe a little communication problem right there. Adam went back, located the ball, and a lot of times you see the second baseman go over. He's got a better angle instead of drifting straight back. He's working towards the ball. And it looked like Adam had camped underneath it, and all of a sudden Jim called him off. And I don't think they actually made contact, but you could tell they kind of confused each other, and the ball right out of Jim's glove. So here's Tom Helt. One away, one on. And Jim Lynch on deck. Tom, part of that first inning rally with an RBI single, he came around to score a run. Justin, another threat to move. Harris now even up two apiece. That's fall back, nothing in two. Wagner well ahead again. Four runs, six hits for Newburgh. Six runs, four hits for Evansville. Wagner here looking for strikeout number 10. As mentioned he came in with impressive numbers. 0-2 pitch. Again to Drew Bailey. Maybe a chance to turn two. Barking redemption turns to double play. 6-4-3. We move to the bottom half of the fifth inning. American Legion Baseball on TV 52. 
Vincent Sable & Associates, insurance and investment products for both business and personal planning. They say only two things in life are inevitable, death and taxes. But when it comes to the well-being of yourself, employees, or loved ones, planning is a must. Without it, death and taxes can become a nightmare. At E.M. Sable, they take care in assisting clients with life and health insurance, personal and business planning, and employee benefits. They've been successful because they help eliminate your fear of the inevitable. Make life your best investment with E.M. Sable & Associates. View. First, the Toledo Torpedo. The Philadelphia Flipper. The Albuquerque Turkey. But the best way to defend yourself is to take the law into your own hands. Take the law into your hands. Turn on the People's Court. Charlie Brown taught Chase, Jeremy Jones, part of this bottom half of the fifth inning, 6-4 in favor of Evansville, Eugene Pate. Second inning of work for Donnie Shemwell. Faced four hitters back in the fourth inning, a lot of butt base hit to Chris McCutcheon. Also picked up a strikeout. Charlie's been to bat twice, had a sacrifice fly and picked up an RBI in the second. Walk was forced out at second back in the third. Breeze will carry the ball a little bit out towards left field right now. Had a little bit of rain and sun today, a little bit of everything, haven't we? Been one of them weather days. Lightning had a little delay in the first game this afternoon. Charlie Brown looking for another double here at the sectionals. Takes a big turn at first. He's satisfied with the leadoff single. Charlie Brown does it again. And that is something he has been doing all summer long, continuing from his high school senior year for Paul Grease and the Central Bears. That one just inside the line at third base. A good job by Lynch in left field to get over and cut that ball off and hold him to just a single. Mike Gady trying to take this bunch to the Runkport Regional. Right now has the lead, six to four. Jeremy Jones on deck. He's had a pretty good day. Pump right up into the glove of Shemwell. And Brown back in plenty of time. One away. Good idea, just couldn't get the ball down on the ground, and it was a pretty tough pitch up in the strike zone. You see a lot of pitchers intentionally throw it up a little bit, so it makes it a lot tougher on the pitcher or on the hitter at the plate to get that ball down on the ground. Pretty good job by Charlie at first base not to get too far off the bag at first. Jeremy Jones out of Bossy High School. We've been saying Bossy very well represented here with Eugene Pate. First to Jeremy's down low in ball one. Drew Bailey and Kyle Wagner down the nine, a third time here for Pate. They are up for five runs in that third inning. The difference in the 6 4. stole a base earlier today for his fifth stolen base of the summer. One ball, one strike from Donnie Shemwell. I mentioned Jeremy's afternoon. He was three for three on base five times in the first game. 0 for 1 here in the second game. Walk, reached on a fielder's choice and picked up an RBI. Came around to score in the third. There goes Charlie Brown, and Toby Wolf couldn't get it off in time. So he held on. And now Brown down at second. Grabs another one, Doug. And that is what you call timely base running, knowing when to go. And again, a, a pretty good pitch to run on, a breaking pitch that was down in the dirt a little bit. Tough for a catcher to come up and make a good, strong throw. So Toby probably did the best thing right there is just hold the ball. He struck him out looking. So down goes Jeremy Jones, and it brings up Drew Bailey. Second strike out of the afternoon for Shemwell. Drew tonight, one for two, has been on base twice, singled back in the second inning, reached on an air back in the third. Trying to get that inside corner again, does. Shemwell has his stuff going now. 
has two outs on his side. Brown down at second. But the defending champions right now trailing six to four in the sectional championship. Oh, one. Trying to break down the middle for him. Missed one, one the count. Wagner hoping to get a shot at it here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. He's on deck. We go back to the top and Hoskins. Two outs on the Newberg side. Foul and out of play. One ball, two strikes. Seven setbacks this year for Eugene Pate. Usually keeping with their pace. They lost eight last year. Newberg impressive with taking 28 out of 30. It's been a while since Pate has won the section. You look, they're very competitive, it seems like, every year, but because of this tournament and the way the teams are set up, it's always tough to get a big win like that in the championship game. Engelbrecht to Sebeska. We go to the top half of the sixth inning. It's 6-4 Evansville. 1993 American Legion Baseball Sectional Championship on TV 52. Those moments of leisure are few and far between. Spend them well with family and friends at Mattingly's 23 Restaurant and Lounge. Mattingly's offers you the finest food and beverages in an atmosphere of friendly relaxation where you always meet lots of fun-loving people. At Mattingly's, you can relax and let yourself go. It's your opportunity to meet new friends or enjoy the evening with old friends. Make it an evening you won't forget at Mattingly's 23 Restaurant and Lounge, 1700 Morgan Center Drive in Evansville. It's got singers, dancers, comedians, fans, and beautiful spokesmodels. There's nothing else like it on television. What is it? Star Search. America's one and only music and variety show. The Star Search stage holds the greatest talent competition in the world. Where the stars of tomorrow entertain you and your family today. Watch to see if your favorites become Star Search champions. Star Search. There's nothing else like it on television. I'm Darren Smith with Doug Emick back out at Bossy Field. Sectional championship of American Legion Baseball. Top half of the sixth inning. Through the first five, Eugene Pate in front, six to four. Six, five, and two, the line score for Pate. Four, six, and two, the line score for Newberg Kapperman. Do up here for Newberg, six, seven, eight in the order. Jim Lynch, Toby Wolf, and Scott Hurt. Final game at Bossy Field here in the summer of 93, although there is a softball charity game on August 23rd out here between Ellis Park Jockeys and us out of shape media guys. So that'll take place on the 23rd of August, Monday night. And that wraps up a pretty good summer, I'd say, at Bossy Field. Like I said back on Friday, I'm going to miss this year's baseball. We had a lot of good times and going back to the spring and then, of course, the state championship of the Memorial Tigers. We've seen just about everything, haven't we? As far as baseball goes, plays on the field, I miss too much. We take about three and a half weeks off and rejoin you on August the 25th from Coke Soccer Field. So we begin our 93-94 season. Looking forward to the season premieres of high school soccer and high school football begins on the 27th. We'll have Central and Modern Day. As mentioned, Jim Lynch, a left fielder, leading off here in the top of the sixth for Newburgh. One for two today, singled with an RBI back in the first inning. Strikeout victim back in the third. Lynch, really a tough afternoon on the Yellow. Had his problems. Tried to settle down, but Joe List wasted no time in bringing in Donnie Shumwell. Third pitcher used by Newburgh championship game. We await the first year to Jim Lynch, and again, Toby Wolf on deck, 6-4 in favor of Evansville. That is Jim Buckting. We have one away. You can see Kyle doing a little bit better with his location 
if you can do any better than he has in the past. Nine strikeouts through the work that he's had so far this afternoon, but he's really cutting down the number of pitches. Last inning, he only faced three hitters. He threw eight pitches. And right there, Lynch going out to the first pitch here in the sixth. Toby Wolf has had a tough afternoon in the championship game. He has struck out twice, once looking back in the first. Became the seventh strikeout victim of Kyle Wagner back in the third inning. It was three up, three down for Pate back in that third. First here to Toby again. Chops one here to Jeremy Jones. Quicker inning so far. Throwing a couple of pitches. We have two away. And I think Newberg realizes that because of the control that Kyle has had most of the afternoon, they are going up, and maybe to the disgust of their coaching staff, swinging at that first pitch. You want to make him maybe throw one pitch before you go after it. Brings up third baseman Scott Hurt. One for two. He's been on base twice. Picked up an RBI single back in the first. Reached on an air back in the fourth. Wagner trying to sit him down in order a second time through the six innings. Top of the sixth, six for Evansville. Wagner missing down low, ball one. Newberg, 28 and two, the defending state champions. Down by two runs. Two and zero oh from Wagner. In control, really, since he stepped in. Since that first inning, the first batter he faced, Lynch, led off with a single. Also, Scott Hurt, the man at the plate right now, single. But since that time, the only ones that have reached have been via the walk or a defensive miscue. And only three of those coming in the last four-plus innings. Two balls and a strike from Kyle Wagner. Again, looking for a strikeout number 10 on the evening. Try to get that outside corner. He does. Two to the count. Sit him down in order. 2-2 by Kyle Wagner. It goes down to Drew Bailey. Three up, three down. We move to the bottom half of the sixth inning. American Legion Baseball's 93 sectional championship continues on TV 52. Checkmate. Set him up again, shrimp. Well, let me show you something. I'll go first. Whether you're trying to beat your big brother. Check me. Or have your legal rights represented. It's best to have experience on your side. Burger and Burger, making a world of difference. Ed Sullivan knew great entertainment when he saw it. A real big shoe. That's wonderful to be that way. The greatest star in the world shook. Mighty, mighty box. Really fun. One of the all-time greats. This is a star. Great entertainment is back every week because Ed Sullivan is back. I'm Darren Smith with Doug Emick. Bottom half of the sixth inning, 6-4 six in favor of Evansville. Eugene Pate. 9-1-2 and two up for the big green machine. Kyle Wagner, Adrian Hoskins, and Jim Bochting. So Pate looking for a little insurance. 6-4 is certainly not comfortable against Newberg Cameron. Kyle. said this earlier, uh, they've been coming from behind a lot this year, Newberg. And with 28 wins, only two losses, the first game of the year and the first game here this afternoon. They have had a lot of success and the confidence is there, and I think that's one of the things that maybe surprised everybody in that first game this afternoon, that once they got to a point, as I mentioned before, not really that they gave up, but they realized that they might lose that game, so they were kind of laying back a little bit, conserving or saving some of their energy for this second game. And they didn't waste any time putting four runs on the scoreboard in the top of the first. Jim well ahead of Wagner. One ball, two strikes. Adrian Hoskins on deck. And a foul ball. Just as it started to reach first base. So we'll do it again. One ball, two strikes. Eight trying to pick up win number 30 here tonight. None would be bigger to this point.
Shimwell delivers one two. Wolves trying to get a bare hand on that, and it's right up the middle. It's Kyle Wagner can hit, by the way, also. We talked about his average coming in. He was three for six coming into the tournament. His first base hit tonight. Back to the top now, and Adrian Hoskins, 0 for two tonight, reached on a walk and scored back in the third. It's always good to have one on if you're Heavensville Pate with nobody out in Hoskins coming up. Just finds a way to get on. And he can do so many different things. We talked about his ability to have a very difficult strike zone, draws a lot of walks. Also a pretty good man at the plate as far as making contact. Both third baseman Scott Hurt and first baseman Justin Sebeska charging, expecting maybe a bunt. But he's got that bat control where maybe he'll square around as if to sacrifice and then pull it back and try to get a chopper through the infield. One and oh to Adrian Hoskins with Jim Bochting on deck. Trying to move up Kyle Wagner. And there is strike one. Not sure what they're arguing about on the last. Saying maybe he stepped on the plate. We saw that called earlier. We had that call in the first game. You see Mike Gatty call Adrian over. Talking strategy, if he thinks he can lay it down, it looked like he was trying to go to the right side of the infield. A little bit easier to get it past. Shemwell coming off the mound, or Justin Sebeska, who's got to hold the runner on before he can charge. If you lay it down the third base side, Hurt's got a possibility of maybe getting the force at second. One ball, one strike. Two up on Newburgh, 6-4, bottom half of the sixth inning. We're going nine. You mentioned the first game this afternoon, shortened to seven innings with the 10-run rule. And into the glove of Toby Wolf. Big out to get Hoskins. Very big out. One away. That's a good job by Shimwell once again trying to lay down a bunt. you got to get a ball that's around the middle of the strike zone, about the waist or maybe below, and that's the second time Donnie has got the ball up in the strike zone. Very difficult to lay that ball down. Jim Bochting, one for three in this championship game. Chris McCutcheon on deck. was two for three. First to Buck that gets behind Toby Wolf. Easy pass down to second for Kyle Wagner. That eliminates the possibility of a double play and now you're going to see probably Bochting try to take something to the right side of the diamond. His base hit in the third inning was through first and second base into right field. And that's going to be one of the things that Shimwell is going to try to avoid is to keep the ball on the outside part of the plate. Right to Jay Engelbrecht. In time to Sebeska. Wagner down to third. I thought for a moment it might have hit. Wagner on the way. Good play right there by Jay, and because it was hit so hard, he almost had it back up a little bit, and a lot of times you see a ball that gets a hop like that will eat up an infielder, but he stayed right with it and made a good, strong throw, realized he didn't have a play over at third base. But a good, alert base running job right there by Kyle. Now he can score on a wild pitch or a pass ball. Here's Chris McCutcheon, and it's B.J. Huff to send us to the seventh inning. 6-4 in favor of Eugene Pate. 1993 sectional championship of American Legion Baseball on TV 52. Five things that make Old National, Old National. Naturally, ours go out of their way to give you the very best, more than a smile. Then there's, because we respect our customers. And four, because your business is important. One more thing. We understand you because we are you. We're your... Here at... That's five. When you hear the sound... 
or see these lights, there's a very good chance that someone needs you. They need your blood to live. Please, when you hear this sound or see these lights, think about giving someone who needs you another chance. This is William Shatner for the American Red Cross. Please, give blood. Trying to whoop things up here for Camperman, who trailed by a score of 6-4 to four as we reach the top half of the seventh inning. And a game scheduled to go nine. You're watching the championship game of American Legion Baseball sectional with the winner here going to Rockport. Doug? 6-4 to four in favor of Eugene Pate. 9-1-2 and two do up here for Newberg, Donnie Shimwell, Jay Engelbrecht, and Tom Tice. So it gets a little bit later, but as we've been saying, Newberg is... Done it a number of times this year. Very late in the ball game, come from behind to win. We've also beaten some teams very decisively this year. Last time we saw Newburgh here on TV 52. Closer contest against Funkhauser over at USI. When you put the season together with 28 wins, you're going to have a few that you fall behind early and it takes a good comeback for a victory. And we saw in the first game this afternoon, they kind of let down a little bit after the fifth or sixth inning, but they are continuing to stay in this ball game, and this is the part of the lineup that they're going to try to get things going. So Donnie Shemwell to begin the seventh inning. It's even at six apiece. Four it counts. Six for Evansville. First at bat today for Donnie, the third pitcher used by Joe Liss and Newberg. And what an outstanding performance after coming in with base runners and only one out back in the first inning by Kyle Wagner. And for his fifth plus inning of work. 1 0 here to Shemwell. And again, it's Jay Engelbrecht on deck. 2 0. Like I said, not much of a problem with Kyle Wagner tonight in his location. Not much at all. Nine strikeouts has yet to issue a walk. And has yet to give up a base hit since back in that first inning. When he first came in, he gave a base hit up to Jim Lynch. Got Wolf on a strikeout and then a base hit to Scott Hurt. First time, 3-0 and out of the batter. Leading off here in the seventh, Donnie Shemwell. One that has to be there for Wagner. Tried to get that corner. Four straight balls by Kyle. As I mentioned earlier, both coaches not going to waste a lot of time. Hit coach Mike Gady out of the dugout in a hurry. Action down in the paid bullpen. We've seen Hines earlier today. We've also seen John Ambrose in game one. He has a few innings left, as does Kenny Bowles. Pitchers here on the weekend can throw 12 innings or make four appearances, whatever comes first. Cutchin has seen some time also on the hill this year. And before the inning, John Ambrose was working his way down to the bullpen and is now warming up down there just in case he is needed. Back to the top of the order for Newberg and Jay Engelbrecht. One for two, singled and scored back in the first, walked in the second, reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth. One on, nobody out here. Newberg seventh. Five straight balls by Kyle Wagner. We go break for the moment, representing the tying run in a 6-4 ball game. Tom Tice is on deck. 1-0. Finally comes back with a strike on the inside corner. One apiece now, the count. Wind out towards left field. 1-1 one, one and Engelbrecht tries to put himself aboard. We'll get the job done. Thrown out at first, but down to second. Moves Donnie Shemwell. Saw Jay do that in the first game this afternoon. Another one that does very well with the bat at the plate and makes contact and also can lay down a bunt when you need it. So now runner in scoring position at second base. Brings up 
center fielder Tom Tice. Tice has had a tough afternoon here in the second game. Struck out twice. Struck out three times. Became the ninth victim of Kyle Wagner. Back in the fourth inning. One down here on the third base side. Down goes Donnie Shemwell. Nothing else really Drew Bailey could do. Had it right in front of him. Runner moving with a hit and run on. Second out here in the top of the seventh. And that's going to bring up B.J. Huff. Well, that's almost a play that a runner has to decide before the ball's hit what he's going to do. You can see with the ball right in front of Donnie, as soon as contact was made, he took off for third. And probably the best play that Drew had was just to try to get him a third, which they did. 1-0 here, the count to B.J. Huff. He's batting 500 for most of this season. 500 or better. one to B.J. Here again, Wagner's best. Painting the inside corner, 1-1 the count. Zabeska on deck. One for three tonight, picked up a single and scored back in the first. 1-1 one, one by Wagner, too far on the inside for ball two. It's been a while since Kyle has struck out a batter. After going good early. Struck out eight of his first 12 he faced. 2-1 by Kyle. Base hit into left field. First and second for Newberg Kapperman. And the defending state champions begin to move here in the top half of the seventh inning as now the tying run is on base as well. Just a good piece of hitting right there by a good hitter. 2-1 pitch on the inside part of the plate. Took it straight out to right field, or left field. Brings up the cleanup hitter for Newburgh, Justin Sebeska. One for three tonight. He's been on base twice. Had an RBI single and scored in the first. Last time up, reached on an error. Chance to bring it one closer, perhaps, with a base hit by Justin. Looking ahead, Tom Held on deck as time is called. First and second for Newburgh as they trail 6-4 in the top half of the seventh inning. This championship game scheduled to go nine. That is the seventh hit also for Newburgh. Right now out hitting Pate 7-6. Interestingly enough, that is their first base hit since back in that first inning when they had four runs on six base hits. The first to Sylvester is strike one. Kyle's toughest inning so far. Faced three in the fifth and the sixth. Faced three in the third, only four back in that fourth inning. Sylvester steps out. Maybe Wagner's starting to tire a little bit with this atmosphere. Realizing one pitch could do you in. Out of play, nothing in two here to Sebeska. Wagner can waste one if he so chooses. You can bet it's not going to be a good pitch as far as offering something for Justin to get around on. Probably a breaking pitch and work it again on the inside part of the outside. Tried to go on the outside yeah. with that one. One ball, two strikes to Savesco. Two on, two away here. Newburgh seventh. Six, four, Pate. Boonville and Funkhauser again eliminated yesterday. One, two pitch, hit him. Base is loaded for Newburgh Kaeperman. Tying run in scoring position, and here is Tom Helt. And here comes Mike Gady, and that is going to be it for Kyle Wagner. And you know that's not what he wanted to do. Now you've got the tying run down at second base. And as I said before, Ambrose was the one that went down to warm up in the bullpen. We'll see if that's going to be him coming in or not. We'll take a timeout. Back out to Bossy Field, American Legion Baseball's sectional championship on TV 52. When home is not a safe place to be, 
When mommy or daddy is the one who causes the hurts to happen. When children have a reason to be afraid, where can they go? For a lucky few, there is the villages. The children who come to the villages are given a second chance. The villages gives them a home, a community, and somebody to belong to. All right, class, let's review. First, the Toledo Torpedo. The Philadelphia Flipper. The Albuquerque Turkey. But the best way to defend yourself is to take the law into your own hands. Take the law into your hands. Turn on the People's Court. John Ambrose enters the game, but not on the hill. Ambrose goes to first, over from first. Adam McCutcheon, as I talked about, has seen some uh, pitching so far this year. Most of his duties has been in the relief role. Coming into the tournament, a perfect 3-0. and Has yet to issue an earned run. Came in with 15 innings of work, a lot. Seven base hits, one run, that not earned. Also 14 strikeouts and five walks. So Ambrose will bat out of the nine hole. Again, over at first base. I think I've seen John too much at first base this year. I know he played a lot at third this year for Coach Merkel. Just to get him into the lineup in case Adam is not able to shut the door here. And again, bases loaded, two out. Newberg with a base hit could possibly tie this game up with Pate leading six to four in the top of the seventh. But if you get John into the lineup, he spent a lot of time down in the bullpen warming up. So more than likely, he is ready. Also, Dan Ming and Kenny Bowles head down now to the paid bullpen to loosen up should they need to go to the bullpen even more. So with two away, the base is loaded for Newberg Camperman as they trail 6-4. Let's see what Adam McCutcheon can do for Evansville Pate. Solid base hit up the middle. Tying run being waved across. Play here at the plate. He did not get him. First and third for Newberg Camperman, and we are all tied up at six. Right fielder Tom Hilton not wasting a lot of time. The first pitch that Adam threw took it right back up the middle. RBIs two and three on the afternoon for him, his second base hit. Now you've got runners at first and third, still two out, but more importantly, this game now tied at six. This is left fielder Jim Lynch. So it's still two away. Runners at the corners for the defending state champion, Newberg Kafferman. Ball one. Newberg's side has come alive again. be trouble. Buckting coming over. Miscommunication between Buckting and Todd Chase. Play here again at the plate. Newberg Kamperman regains the lead. Again, another tough ball to handle as far as the outfielder coming in. You had Ambrose who just got Insert into the lineup at first base, going back. Also, Bockting. You can see Jim again trying to get control out there, and it looked like he and Todd Chase trying to talk to one another as far as who was going to take it. Jim pulled off. Todd was not there, so it fell in. Alert base running by Tom Held, who scored all the way from first base. Two more runs, four now in the inning, an 8 to 6 lead for Newberg. Brings up catcher Toby Wolf, hitter number eight in this inning. First one out of play for Toby. Oh, one Adam McCutcheon in for Kyle Wagner. Four have scored here for Newburgh. Nine hits now. Four post 44. One ball, one strike to Toby Wolf. Eighth batter 
to come here this inning. We see Scott Hurd on deck. We'll have seen the nine here on the seventh. Here's the one-one pitch. Two and one. And we said before, you knew this Newburgh club was capable of mounting a rally just about any point in the ball game. It just took them about five plus innings before they got back on track. They scored four runs on six base hits in the first inning. Then basically held hitless innings two through six. Weird hit ball. That's going to get the job done. Toby Wolf okay at first. First and second for Newburgh. It was Scott Hurt coming up. They have batted through here on the seventh inning. Kind of the scenario that people saw in the first game out here when Pate was just getting base hits. Everything that they were doing seemed to be working their way. Now Newberg getting the opportunity here in the seventh inning. Three straight base hits after a hit batter and then a base hit by B.J. Huff. This all started with a walk to Don Shemwell. Shemwell is on deck and Chris and Adam to talk. It has been, you know, that kind of afternoon, up and down. And you can never count out any ball club, especially when you get this far in a tournament. The championship game, Pate responding with a big 14-run victory in the first game here at Bossy Field this afternoon, 16-2 over an undefeated Newburgh. So that is the reason we're seeing a second game. Newburgh jumping on top with four runs in the top of the first inning. One Pate, ball and one strike. Pate getting one in the second, a big five in the third. Newburgh trying to add to their 8-6 lead. Again, one and one here to Scott Hurt. They're going to come right down the middle with it. Works. One ball, two strikes. Base hit should be enough to score Jim Lynch, who's now down at second. Toby Wolf at first. Adam McCutcheon looking for his first strikeout. Runners move. This one again could be some trouble. Backing up Jim Buckting. Nine batters later. Four in for Newberg Kapperman. And they have the lead. Eight to six. As we move to the stretch half of the seventh. The sectional championship of American Legion Baseball on TV 52. Kennecott Northside is celebrating summer with savings on every Mazda in stock. It's a summer saving celebration and your chance to save like never before. This Mazda protege with air, tilt, AM, FM cassette and more is yours for only $10,121. Mazda means quality and value and the best bumper to bumper warranty in the business. And during our summer saving celebration, it means savings on every Mazda in stock. Kennecott Mazda, Northside at Diamond and Heidelbach. You just get more from us. Hey, fans, check your local schedule for all the bloops and blunders and magnificent wonders. Coming up next time on This Week in Baseball. Half of the seventh inning, I'm Darren Smith with Doug Emig at the sectional championship of American Legion Baseball and Newburgh back on top by a score of eight to six. Donnie Shimwell in for his fourth inning of work. Came in beginning the fourth inning, faces four, five, and six here for Pate. Adam McCutcheon, Charlie Brown, and Todd Chase. Newburgh jumping on top early, four nothing. Five runs back in the third before getting one in the second. Had Pate up six to four. That has changed. Four runs in the seventh and an 8-6 ball game. Down low for ball one. Adam tonight 0 for 1. Walked in the second and scored. Walked in the third and scored. And a strikeout victim, the first strikeout of Shemwell's two back in the fourth. Shemwell delivers 1-1. One, one. High and inside for ball two. 
up our coverage of American Legion Baseball this evening in the sectional championship. Two and two. Wind blows straight out, now shifts to left. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Again, letter high inside. Three and two to Adam McCutcheon. Eight trailing, eight six in the sectional championship. We'll go nine. This is the bottom half of the seventh inning. Base hit up the middle. Lead off single for Adam McCutcheon brings up Charlie Brown. Back and forth they go. First base hit tonight for Adam. Charlie one for one, had a sacrifice fly, picked up an RBI in the second, walked in the third, and then had a single, picked up a stolen base in the fifth. And Adam out by four steps over at first. Shemwell here to the plate, well on the outside for ball one. Todd Chase on deck. Sebeska moving over. Bounces once and out of play. It looks like Matt Dillo will bat for Chase. We've seen Matt a couple times during our regular season. A vital part of that bench coming off for Peyton Mike Gady. Has done the job most of the season with some big base hits. Also key RBIs. One ball, two strikes from Donnie Shemwell. Shemwell looking for a big out here at Chopper. They may turn two. Engelbrecht goes to first. And he turns the double play. We talked about the athletic ability of Jay Engelbrecht. You can see right there, very composed, waited just perfectly to field that ball, stepped on the bag as he was going by for the force out, and then a good strong throw to Justin at first. So a quick two outs brings up Matt Dillo. As mentioned, he's done the job most of the afternoon, or most of the season for Pate. 372 the average, 16 hits, has 15 RBIs, and doesn't waste any time getting on the board here. Takes the first pitch for a base hit to right field. Two out single. Brings up Jeremy Jones. Jones, who reached in a fielder's choice back in the third, came across to score one of five in that third. Other than that, he walked and he struck out back in the fifth. And another base hit back to back. Jones and Dillo. Dillo on his way to third. Runners at the corners for Eugene Pate. That double play becomes all that much bigger now, doesn't it? And you can see that Pate going after the first pitch, much like we saw Newberg a couple innings ago. They know Shimwa's going to be around the plate with most of his pitches. Matt took the first pitch out to right field. Jeremy the first pitch to left center. Now first and third and shortstop Drew Bailey at the plate. Ambrose is on deck, but two away here for Newberg. Tying run now over at first for Evansville. Led most of the game. 6-4. Big top of the seventh for Newbury. Dillo 90 feet away. That's Jones over at first. Here is the first to Drew Bailey. It's high for ball one. Drew tonight one for three. Singled back in the second. Reached on an air back in the third. Last time up in the fifth inning. Bounced out to Jay at shortstop. was tied 6-6 momentarily for Newberg exploded again. Tough one to get in time. In time by about a half a step. Pate leaves a costly two on the bags. We've got an 8-6 as we head to the top half of the eighth inning. The 1993 American Legion Baseball Sectional Championship on TV 52. Well, 
every business has different needs. They need a bank that can customize its business services. We've got to listen to what they want. We save them money, make them more profitable. And our experience can help them succeed. You know, we've grown with many area businesses. Offering them checking, investment services. Loans of all types, even international banking. We work hard to understand the businesses in this community. Business banking from Citizens, the bank that's leading the way. Hi. Hi, Bob. How's business? Oh, really good. You remember Karen Ashley? Smith with Doug Emick, top half of the eighth inning. 8-6 eight, in favor of Newberg Camperman. A big four runs in the top of the seventh inning for Newberg when they sent nine to the plate, four runs on four base hits. This is where it all started off an inning ago. Donnie Shemwell walked to start that inning off. Adam McCutcheon begins work in his second inning now. Has Engelbrecht and Tice after Shemwell, and that's tough. One ball, one strike. Newberg six outs away from repeating again as sectional champions. One ball, two strikes to Shemwell. strikeout tonight for Adam McCutcheon. We have one away. Both clubs really at the point of the lineup where they want to be to get some more runs if you're Newberg to increase that lead. For Page, you want to try to get back in the ball game. Back to the top of the order for Newberg and Jay Engelbrecht. One for two tonight. He's been on base three times. Singleton scored back in the first. Last time up in the seventh inning had a sacrifice. And a key opportunity here for him to get on base and to start another rally. Nothing in two, so way ahead of the count is Adam McCutcheon. Ambrose, Hoskins, and Barking. That's 9-1-2 due up in the eight. Bottom of the eighth. One and two as he wastes one high. Goes straight out. Count holds one two. Several players on either of these teams, Haight or Newburgh, if they win the state, can say they won two states this year. Talking about those players who joined from Memorial. And as the Evansville High School sectional was, this pretty much the same way. Probably the toughest road to the state championship is getting out of your own sectional. Jeremy Jones in foul grounds has plenty of room, and we have two away. Pretty good job of pitching right there by Adam. A very tough hitter to get down at the plate. You can see Jay battling two good pitches, fouled him straight back, and then just made contact as he lost control of his bat in the foul territory. Brings up center fielder Tom Tice, 0 for 4 last time up, reached on a fielder's choice, came around to score. 1 and 0 here, the count to Tice, and you've got B.J. Huff on deck. Newberg trying to go to 29 and 2 and a return trip to the regionals. We have a 2 and 0 count to Tom Tice. Space is clean and too quick out here. Takes a ride to center field. Adrian Hoskins has to back way up. That is off the wall. Tom Tice on his way to third base. And Tice is in there with a triple. First base hit for Tom in the second game. And it looked like he might have hesitated a little bit around second and third. And I thought maybe that might cost him. He wasn't sure if he should go or not. 
but the throw a little bit late as he slid in underneath the tag. So the threat continues even with two out. And again, head coach Mike Gady out of the dugout for Pate. So it's going to bring up B.J. Huff. Now they've talked about his bat all season. None was better in this area. 90 feet away is Tice. Stuberg tries to add to an 8-6 lead, and it's getting late here in the top half of the eighth inning. Pretty good game for B.J. to this point. Two for four. Single and scored in the first. Single and scored again in the seventh. And Justin Zavesco. He's also done quite well. Not just today, but throughout the season. is on deck. First pitch to B.J. Missing down low for ball one. Two out triple for Tice as Newberg thinking three run lead. Here's the 1 0 well on the outside. That is going to score Tom Tice. Newberg leads 9 to 6 at the sectional championship. Be surprised what an additional run as far as insurance can mean to a ball club. That means it's going to take at least three runs for Peyton the next couple innings to at least tie this up. And I think that that will give Donnie Shimwell, the pitcher for Newberg, a little bit easier time on the mound knowing that he's got that three-run cushion to work with. Well on the inside high, 3-0 and oh here to B.J. Huff. to be there. Comes back with strike one. Jim Buckting sends us to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Another scoring for Newberg Kafferman. They're late now 9-6. to six. American Legion Baseball's sectional championship on TV 52. All this week on Montel Williams. Monday, should inmates be allowed to raise their children in prison? Tuesday, she says she doesn't need a man to be happy. He says she's lying. Wednesday, her son was a drunk driver. Now she's going to jail. Find out why. Thursday, they can manage to burn water. Is there hope for bad cooks? Friday, they lost custody because they're white. Should race matter in adoption? Coming up this week on Montel Williams. When the party's over, you can keep those good times, safe times, with a designated driver. Maybe you already know that. But many boaters don't seem to know that a designated driver on the water makes a lot of sense, too. So to keep your party afloat safely, designate a driver. Whatever you drive, wherever you drive, it just makes sense. I'm Darren Smith with Doug Emig as we move to the bottom half of the eighth inning. 9-6 in favor of the defending state champions, Newberg. 9-1-2 do up here for Pate in the eighth inning. John Ambrose, his first trip to the plate tonight. Adrian Hoskins and Jim Bochting. Big swing and a miss for strike one. Shemwell worked quick. Ran it down to B.J. Huff. We have one away. Donnie into his fifth inning of work. Came on back in the fourth inning, allowed a bunt base hit to Chris McCutcheon. Has allowed at least one base hit. The big inning for Pate back in the seventh when they had three base hits, but a double play in between. A couple of those hits really shut down any opportunity. Leadoff hitter Adrian Hoskins now to the plate. 0 for 3 tonight. Walked and scored back in the third. Dropped by Toby Wolf. Low pitch for ball one. Sebeska, Helton, Lynch awaiting in the top of the ninth inning. Shemwell comes back, evens the count, one and one. It's been a long 
long day of baseball. Again to B.J. Huff down at second, two away. Well, that's one thing that Newberg has done this second game that they were unable to do in the first game is keep Adrian off the bases. And only one time on base tonight, that's when he walked and scored. Brings up second baseman Jim Bochting, one for four tonight. Singleton scored in that same third inning. Trying to sit him down three in a row. Right there for Toby Wolf. Three up, three down. We move to the ninth. Nine six Newberg at the sectional championship on TV 52. Looking for great food, good times, and free entertainment? You'll find it at the 1993 Evansville River Fest, August 4th through 7th on the Main Street Walkway and Riverside Drive. Delicious catfish fiddler dinners and other festival foods. Rides and games for kids, the Office Olympics, live bands featuring the Brown Sisters, Patoka Valley Boys, and others. There's a free kids' fair, classic car show, and fun for everyone. For more information, call 424-2986. Evansville River Fest, August 4th through 7th, downtown Evansville. Where does he get his information about drugs, alcohol, and sex? One day he's a child, and the next he's making decisions that could risk his life. It's a helpless feeling for a parent because you can't always be with him to keep him safe. But you can teach him how to be safe, and those words will stay with him, even when you can't. We can help you talk about AIDS. Call for a guide. Of the ninth inning, 9 6 Newburgh. 4 5 and 6 do up for Kapperman post number 44 here in the ninth inning. Sebeska, Help, and Lynch. Chris McCutcheon, Adam McCutcheon, and Charlie Brown. The last chance for Pate when we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Earlier this afternoon, Pate taking care of Newburgh 16 2. In the championship game, one will go home. And now Newburgh three outs away from that. Like to add to a 9-6 lead here. Justin tonight one for three at an RBI single and scored back in the first inning. Was hit by a pitch and scored in the seventh. Base hit. Lead off single for Justin Sobesco. It's like this team sits back and they wait. And then they attack. Again, Mike Gady not wasting a lot of time out of the dugout. Went out last inning to talk to Adam. And he's going to pull everybody in. Infield discussion here. One thing is to how to pitch to this next hitter, Tom Held, who's done some damage today. Two for four. An RBI single. He scored back in the first inning, picked up two RBIs with a single and scored that back in the seventh. This was the first hitter that Adam faced. Tom's also hit into a 6-4-3 double play. And he's going with the big gun. John Ambrose and Adam McCutcheon just going to switch places defensively. Well, Doug, we will keep it here. As I said earlier, we say goodbye for about three and a half weeks as we round out our 92-93 season here on TV52. And after a pretty good season throughout all the sports we've been covering, much needed rest is on the way for us and we really couldn't have brought you one single game if it had not been for our what we call super sponsors here on tv 52 they have come through and it's people like that the businesses the local establishments that make these telecasts possible darren mentioned 109 regular season games we also had quite a few in the postseason both in soccer as well as football in the fall, covering the Evansville sectional and basketball and then advancing to the state tournament with Memorial in the baseball season. And we show these games night after night and you look through and you see all the sponsors. A lot of times people don't pay that much attention to the commercials in between the game action. But again, if it was not for them and we ask you to give your support to the local businesses that help us bring you these local sports. We will do it again beginning on August 25th as we bring you more than 100 games in the next year. Tonight we wrap up our 92-93 season with a sectional championship of American Legion Baseball. Nobody gone here on the top half of the ninth inning. John Ambrose. 
who pitched seven innings today in that 16-2 blowout. Sebastian at first. Here's the first to Tom Hilt. He gets up behind Chris McCutcheon. So much for your double play ball. Went seven innings in the first game this afternoon, threw 111 pitches. Six strikeouts, also had three walks, but really shut the door on any opportunity that Newberg had. Only two runs, a solo shot by Justin in the fourth inning and a double, an RBI single by Scott Hurt. Those were the only two runs that came across against John. One ball, one strike. Across a tenth, they lead it 9 6 here on the top of the ninth. Here's the 1 1 pitch right up the middle for a base hit. That'll score Justin Savesco. And Newberg Camperman has their four run lead back, which they made back in the first inning. Pretty good afternoon for Tom Hill. Picks up his third base hit, RBI number four. Now a 10-6 lead for Newberg brings up Jim Lynch. He has done damage as well. He's got two base hits, three RBIs at this point. Last time a two, big two RBI single coming in the seventh. It's been a day full of up and down emotions. How happy Pate was after game one at 16-2. They knew that was just half the job on this day. Newberg then explodes in the first inning for four runs. They lead 4-0. Pate comes back with five runs of their own in the third, and that time they took a 6-4 lead. Right back comes Newberg. Nobody out, and held over at first. 2-0 from Ambrose. Pitch by John. Taking all the way that time, Lynch two and one. Check back over at first to keep Helt there. Tavesca already in. And right now, that should be the last of John's worries, a runner at first base. You need to concentrate on the guy at the plate. Runner goes. The arm of Chris McCutcheon in time is helped. Another in scoring position. Count now 3-2 to Jim Lynch. Good job by Tom right there, taking Newberg out of a possible double play situation. A good pitch by Ambrose, and you can see a pretty good throw by... Catcher Chris McCutcheon just a little bit late because of the good jump. But again, John doesn't really need to worry about that runner at second base. They're down four runs. He needs to concentrate on the next three guys at the plate. Three and two to Jim Lynch. And that is down in the dirt. Health moves to third base. Runners at the corners for Newberg Kaeperman. Still nobody out. in favor of Newburgh. American Legion Baseball's sectional championship continues after this timeout. It's got singers, dancers, comedians, bands, and beautiful sports models. There's nothing else like it on television. What is it? Star Search. America's one and only music and variety show. The Star Search stage holds the greatest talent competition in the world. Where the stars of tomorrow entertain you and your family today. Watch to see if your favorites become Star Search champions. Star Search. There's nothing else like it on television. Ed Sullivan knew great entertainment when he saw it. 
Ever since I saw you, I knew you were my dream. Sometimes rejection. But I already have a boyfriend. The results can be outrageous on infatuation. Some people are afraid airbags might go off when they're not supposed to. But look. See, they don't go off when you're hitting the side. They don't go off when you're hitting the rear, either. That's what seatbelts are for. In fact, airbags only go off when you're hitting the front. But you have to be going about 11 miles per hour. See, you don't need to worry about airbags. Unless you don't have one. Last call for Evansville, Eugene Pate. Bottom half of the ninth inning in 10-6 in favor of Newburgh, who are three outs away from winning this year's sectional championship. Four runs down, a lot of work ahead of them, but for Pate, this is the part of the lineup you expect to see a lot of production, a lot of offense. Three, four, five, as Darren mentioned. Chris McCutcheon, Adam McCutcheon, and Charlie Brown. They're looking to do it for a third straight year. That's win the Legion sectional championship. There is ball one to Chris McCutcheon. Ten to six. Four runs separating. Newberg and Pate. One ball, one strike. McCutcheon fouls that back. Adam McCutcheon on deck. One one by Shemwell. This is down low on the inside. Two on the count. Pate needs the base runners. Pretty good job by Donnie. Entering his sixth inning of work, he came back in in the fourth inning. And has yet to allow Pate to get on the scoreboard after they put one on the second inning, a big five on the third inning when they took the six to four lead. 2-2 two -two pitch. Chopper right here to Scott Hurt. Trying to hold on. Got it. Justin Sebeska who dropped the ball, and now a punch is thrown. And here go the benches at the sectional championship. Justin Savesca and Chris McCutcheon, who exchanged a few words. And many trying to control Charlie Brown, who also came right off the bench. Tempers flare at Bossy Field. Justin Sebesco still mouthing and pointing as cooler heads prevail. Well, I think the question right now with Mike Gideon bubbles Pollock over at first base, did Justin have the ball? And it appeared from up here he was still trying to pick it up off the ground. First base umpire Terry West ruling that it wasn't out. ball game. More than likely Chris McCutcheon. Although with this the last bat for Pate, that won't really have any outcome of the ball game. What surprised you there is a lot of these guys are friends. Some even played on the same team this spring. Bench is still bantering back and forth. And you just hope you don't see that again. Well, I think that as far as Newber is concerned, Justin's out of the ballgame. Also, Charlie Brown has been ejected. So we're going to have a pinch hitter, the number three man in the order this inning. That's Chris Arterberry over there at first for Newberg. And we will see Adam McCutcheon here to the plate. It all started when Chris came to first, overran first, and they called him out. Maybe thought he was safe. Zavesca then tagged McCutcheon rather hard, and McCutcheon came right back at him. Two outs to go. And this one will be settled. away as Darren mentioned for Newberg. Adam McCutcheon at the plate and it looks
looks like Jason Craddock is going to be the pinch hitter for Charlie Brown. away from winning the sectional championship. Strike one to Adam McCutcheon. Adam denied one for two, walked back in the second, walked again in the third, both times he scored. And singled back in the seventh. Nothing in two. Donnie Shemwell. Coming in for Jim Lynch, who came in for Tom Tice. Struck him out. One out away to the sectional championship. Here we get our first look today at Jason Craddock. Third strikeout of the afternoon for Donnie. And you look at the numbers on Jason, who spent a lot of time behind the plate for Pate this year. 256 is numbers coming into the tournament. 20 base hits and 78 at bats. One out to go for Newberg. A little ugly moments ago. Not a bad day of baseball. Up and down all afternoon. Base hit into center field. So Pate won't go quietly. They're down to their final out. And it brings up again Matt Dillo. Matt, a pinch hitter back in the... And it brings up again... Matt Dillo. Matt, a pinch hitter back in the seventh inning. He came on the first pitch he faced from Donnie Shimwell, lined it right out into right field. So now Pate trying to get something going, and we've seen this quite a few times this year with our high school coverage and Legion coverage. Rally starting with two out. Strike one here to Matt Dillo. One out to go for Newberg Kapperman. You've got Craddock over at first base. Nothing in two from Donnie Shemwell. One strike away from a three-peat in the sectionals for Newberg Kapperman. They took a record of 28-1 in here. Fell short early this afternoon. They may have the last lap. Here's the 0-2 pitch by Donnie Shemwell. He did it. Newberg Kapperman for a third straight year has won the American Legion Baseball Sectional Championship. And we mentioned before, comeback victories. After they fall behind, they get off to an early 4 to nothing lead. Hay took advantage with six runs, one in the second, five in the fifth to take a, or five in the third to take a six to four lead. And then Newberg responded with four of their own in the seventh, one in the eighth, one in the ninth. These are two very good ball teams, Doug Emick. Two very good ball teams. And like we said earlier, it's a shame that three very good ball teams were eliminated from this sectional. Always tough to play because of the competition level here in Evansville in southern Indiana. You had Boonville and Funkhauser. Those were the first two teams eliminated. Payne had their backs against the wall coming into Sunday afternoon. Newburgh was in the winner's bracket. They had to get beat twice. They beat them the first game 16-2, but Newburgh came back, showed that they were the sectional champions. They wanted to make another trip to Rockport. They shall. The Rockport Regional is next for Newburgh. And who knows? Maybe back-to-back -back as far as the state championship. They are Newburgh.